Okay, hello YouTubers, my friends, whoever you may be, Facebookers. Today we're cooking meatloaf. Uh, this is a stainless steel rack. I'm doing it in Pyrex. Uh, the uh, meatloaf, I think, is about 80% lean. Uh, got about three pounds going on here. Got a couple of range, free range eggs, homegrown from my girls. They're doing good this year. Onion, crackers, green pepper, garlic, a little cumin, and uh, a little curry powder. I think that makes a good little taste. And some chub. I like chub. Okay, let's get started with this thing. The, uh, well, you don't need to see me cutting up no green pepper, but this is my Ulu board from Alaska. Uh, it's curved to match the knife, the little Ulu, and it's really sweet. The only thing is I wish I could get more than two fingers around the handle, but it really works good. You'll see this here in a minute. All right, let's switch over here. All right. We're going to dice this pepper up to maybe a quarter inch dice, or it really don't matter. You can make a mush out of it if you want to. The, it's, the green pepper adds a kind of a bittery flavor to whatever you cook. Even if you saute them, get them soft. Uh, you know, green pepper is kind of bitter, right? But uh, this is a whole pepper. Uh, I think it was. Uh, in my experience, it was a large pepper. Now we're going to do the onion. And we'll do a fine chop on it, about like we did on the peppers. You don't need to see me chopping up no onion, I know. But I'll show you a little bit about this Ulu and how to work one. Sweet, huh? I like it. Works good. I had a lady tell me one time, why don't you just use a grater? a lot faster yeah but a grater makes mush out of your onion all the juices run out uh with this uh you don't have that going on okay three pound of burger i'm gonna put about a pound and a half in here to start with uh it's a whole lot easier to mix up with a little bit to start with and then we'll add the other pound and a half and this stuff is cold i can't keep my hands in it too much too long. I didn't let it get to room temperature. And you really don't need to on this. By the time I get everything in the oven, this this, this temperature is going to drop pretty good. Okay, free range chicken eggs. I take care of my chickens. These are some really good eggs. You can probably tell by the color of the yolk. Uh, overall here, I'm going to do about, uh, maybe a tablespoon of minced garlic at the most. Just depend on how you like garlic. It really, what I just did won't put a real big garlic flavor on my meatloaf. And we'll do about a teaspoon or so of cumin. Maybe a little more. Have to be careful on these spices because these things will overpower anything pretty quick. Now, this is curry. Uh, I think it's red curry. Uh, I think curry is mostly used uh, used a lot in India cuisine. Uh, it just depends on whether you like it or not. If you don't like it, just leave it out. And here comes the chub. A whole lot, right? Uh, maybe a quarter cup, half cup. I like chub. Yeehaw. And we'll put in some salt and crackers um, for a binder, not for flavor. Ain't much flavor to it. But people say, I've always heard that uh, the crackers uh, help it stick together, keep it from being uh, so much folly a party, if you know what I mean. I thought the eggs do that. The reason I use two eggs. When I started using two eggs, 
in my meatloaf, uh, it started holding together a whole lot better. And I, I still use the crackers anyway, uh, you know, what the heck. And this stuff's pretty cold. I, I'll have to mix a little here and a little there. I got another pound and a half to mix into it. And I wash my hands a whole lot. Anytime I touch any raw meat, but anything, I wash my hands. I, I'm real particular about that. And what we're doing now, I'm using a little, um, actually this is olive oil, but you can use uh, any kind of oil, whatever your preference is. Canola oil, peanut, veggie, whatever. And all we're gonna do is just uh, slather it on top of the grill. Uh, just a little bit to uh, so the meatloaf don't stick as bad. Now I'll show you a little trick. Put your meatloaf on a little flexible something or another. Or it could be the wooden board that I had it sitting on there, the uh, wooden shop block uh, cutting board. We want to flatten this thing out to about an inch and a half, two inches, or whatever you want, but uh, just make sure that it's the same thickness from end to end so it all cook at the same time. And at this point, you can uh, do a layer of ketchup on top if you want. Uh, but I think I normally put enough ketchup in mine to start with. The ketchup will cook up and, you know, it really won't do much as far as the crust or, you know, a good topping. But uh, I've had uh, some likes about it. Now, check this out. Put your rack on upside down, flip it, voila, it's on the rack. We're ready to put this thing in the oven now. Set my oven on about 350 Fahrenheit. Let it preheat. And when it gets there and gives me the little tinkle linkle, I'll set it on about 45 minutes. Three fifty degree Fahrenheit, forty five minutes cook time. Uh, you really don't even have to check it. Just when you get your buzzer, it's done. Okay, it's been about forty five minutes. Let's see what this bad boy looks like. I know it's done. I don't even have to check it. Okay, there it is. We're looking at about 170-ish. And that's pretty good on hamburger. You need a high temperature on hamburger. It's not like steak. Uh, you can have bacteria inside the meat. Okay, let me give you a close-up of this. This is the drippings from this meat. Stuff that you really don't want in your uh, meatloaf. I don't like sloppy wet meatloaf. I like it crispy. Look at all that fat and that crap that you be eating. All that be on your sandwich and in your plate. <laughs> Now that is a nice meatloaf. This thing is going to be awesome.
And while I'm at it, uh, a little side dish to go with it. We're going to do a, uh, a little salad. Got some lettuce, tomato, mayonnaise. Got some uh, pickled uh, peppers. Uh, got some uh, cream cheese. And um, got a can of tuna in water. We'll open this thing up with that P-52 or whatever they call them nowadays. And I drain it. Okay, in the tuna. Now you can do this with chicken, canned chicken. You can do it with any meat, whatever your preference. Add a little mayonnaise. And uh, we'll throw in a little bit of sour cream. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Actually, this is cream cheese. You can do it with sour cream, but... I like the cream cheese because it's, it's more creamy, it's thicker, um, and I think it lasts longer in the fridge. Uh, we'll cut up a few um, pickled banana peppers, pepperoncinos, whatever they call them. Slice it in to get the vinegar out of it. Because these things are full of vinegar. And just fold them out and get the seeds out. Do a little fine chop chop. And that's your relish. You can do store bought relish or whatever you want. And we'll give it a little mix. Yeah, check this out. Let's get a slab of this meat. My mouth's watering already. Yeah, don't want to be a pig. This is this is a good serving, a good taste test. When the tribe gets here, this stuff will be gone in about three minutes anyway. Uh, we'll try off a little fresh lettuce, a little green stuff, get get rid of the hard stuff. And throw a little dollop of this salad on here. And this is some really good stuff. You guys need to check this out. It's really good. And this is a meal fit for a king. Slice up some tomato with the old K-ball. And there it is. Uh, put a little more salad on it so you can see it. Oh, yes. All right. Thank you for watching. Subscribe, like, and share.